All right, this is what we're doing today on Dave's Garage. I am Dave. This is my garage. So what are we doing? Well, Christmas came early. So this has been my, my Triumph Speed Twin project bike. Not project, like it was busted up and had to restore it. You know, it's a brand new bike, but doing lots of cool things to it. Um, X-Pipe comprehensive tuning, Olin shocks, little front windscreen, heated grips, K-Tech racing forks, Folin's damper, and uh, some other stuff. Well, Alex, which if you remember, Alex is a buddy met on the Triumph group. I always goof on him. He's a good dude, but I always tease him because usually when I'm doing videos and my phone's going off like nonstop is because me, him, and Lane are texting in the background, so I always tease him about that. However, he's um, he's been doing a lot of the same mods I've been doing um, but he did some more cosmetic stuff than I did, and he went and um, basically, uh, he's going to be. He returned his bike to stock because he's going to be uh, upgrading to a um, Hayabusa. He was looking at some different bikes, and I've been talking to him about my uh, my uh, ZX14, and just a big, fun, fast. But also a very comfortable, capable bike. So he's like, you know what? I returned my stuff to stock. I'm going to give you a bunch of stuff. I'm like, are you sure? Like, I'm not going to say no. It's a sweet deal. Um, but he didn't want any money for it. So I did send him something as a way to say thank you. But Alex freaking hooked me up. <laughs> so thank you very much. This was extremely generous. So let's see what we got here. And there's another box of stuff coming tomorrow. So right now, and I had been thinking about getting one of these, and uh, just hadn't gotten around to it. Next thing was going to be a uh, quick shifter. But um, he's like, I got this seat. Seriously, guys, look at this. <laughs> so it's a Crafton Atelier. I don't know. But it's a really nice quilted seat. A little bit more padding than stock, but looks really nice. And uh, the back is kind of humped up, so it gives it more of that cafe racer-ish look. So let me move my jammy Dodgers. We'll be enjoying those. Those did not come from Alex. Those came from my wife. If you're working on a Triumph, you always got to have jammy Dodgers on hand. So this will be the easy install. Put that aside for, for the moment. Ooh. Should just rest on those metal tabs. Does it go down into them? It does. So that goes in. So we'll say this. Huh. So this is odd. I don't know how to put the damn seat on. There's a tab here. I think it's going to go under and there and then lock in. It doesn't have the hooks in the back like the stock seat does. Judging by the rub marks here, this tab has to go over there. And then this, I'm guessing, is going to go down into these tabs. And then, of course, the lock in the back. So I guess I can speed this up if I need to. Spending too long sitting here dicking with this. So that has to go in. I guess you just wiggle it in like that. Okay. Yeah, it's actually locked in nice. So let's see how it looks. Ooh, that's tasty. That looks good with the matte black. I mean, the old seat looked pretty good too, but that quilted. It definitely makes it look more uh, more retro-ish. Very, very cool. Um, I'll have to go ride on it and see how it feels, but I mean, just playing with it, it feels pretty good. But it's uh, very nice looking. Huh. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Now the next piece, what do we got? Oh, and there's another box of things coming tomorrow. There's like adjustable levers, foot pegs, a new screen up front. Um, 
I don't know. He, he sent a whole box of stuff. I just, I'm, I'm kind of floored by all this. Hopefully he likes what I sent him. But he'll find that on Monday. All right, so what do we got in the box? This box is a set of... Cone Engineering Shorty Pipes, Shorty Muffers. Silicone gasket. Said there were some spacers, I think, in here. Which I just flung on the floor. They're in the bag. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Let's put this maybe down here. Let's try that. So I got these little spacers. So a little cone engineering. So that's gonna be for the other side. A lot smaller. Should be a little lighter, although these are a little, I don't know, I guess it should be a little lighter. So we'll go install these real quick. Real straight through. So are the stock ones. So this will be interesting to see how these sound. Um, he's got some silicone sealant in there. We'll get rid of some of that. Don't need all that in there. Some soot. All right. So what do we need? We need a 10 millimeter and a 12. So let's go get that. Swapping these out should be real easy. This bike makes it very, very easy. Push this down. Put a screwdriver in there to hold the back of the screw. And then we're gonna wanna go on this side, pull it back to loosen that screw. And the screwdriver, again, is just jammed in the head of the hex nut because otherwise you gotta take off the peg to get and you gotta play with the C-clamp and you know, all that crap. Now I don't feel like doing any of that. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen this. All right. And now we're going to loosen the 10 millimeter nut on the bottom. Loosen that. Remove the bolt. Now, I'm not doing this for any kind of performance gains because one, a three inch hole is not gonna flow appreciably different than another three inch hole. So I'm not doing it for that reason, but it'll make it smaller and these are lighter. So I'm drop, I'd say that's probably eight pounds. That's three or four. So we're gonna drop some weight off the bike for sure. So now, just gotta loosen that. So you snug it up so it wouldn't move around. And apparently, it's uh, what size is that? Must be an 11. Because the 10 doesn't fit. Yeah, so to tighten that, we'll grab a different socket, but that's all right. So loosen that up. Slide that shiz on. We need to get it behind there. So I'm gonna do it like that. Now we'll say, so that spacer, hmm, I'm not sure. Is it gonna go in like that, I guess? Yeah, all right. So that goes in, that goes in. That goes in like that. Slide that all the way forward. So what we want to do is get that as far forward as it can to get as much overlap here as we can. And then uh, 
go ahead and start to snug this up. And before it's like snug, snug, I'm gonna go push it again as far forward as possible. Let me go get the other wrench or socket. I think it's an 11, unless they're using non-metric, which would be odd. No, 11 fits. So we get that right where we want it. It's right at the end, no gaps. Set that to tighten. Push it all the way forward. We'll go ahead and torque that. Perfect. And now we'll finish tightening up the back. Nice, definitely smaller, out of the way. I think they're gonna sound bloody brilliant, but let's go to the other side. Let's do the same process. Then we're gonna fire it up, see how it sounds. All right, let's do it this way. Hopefully we'll get less glare from the sun. All right, so that down, 12 mil screwdriver. We're gonna to want to go uh, that way. to the 10 mil, loosen, and pop that shiz off. Again, at least eight or nine pounds, half that. Easily half the weight, if not a tiny bit lighter. Very good. You did good, Alex, you did good. Right, switch back to our 11. Loosen it just a little bit. Slide that on, get our spacer. Kind of get that back there and get everything sort of lined up here. Now, why is that not fitting? Interesting. Let's see what's happening here. That is hitting the swing arm. It's like this thing doesn't. Maybe as it goes, maybe as it goes in and on, it'll clear it. But that is definitely rubbing on the swing arm. How the hell? Huh. That is most peculiar. So, it's not bent. This is going to have to go on. It's not going to fit outside. It's not going to fit like that. This is definitely the one for the right. So, 
Let's see if I can get it. That doesn't make any sense. All I can think of is once it gets on enough, it's going to clear that swing on, but unfortunately, I'm having trouble just getting it on. Let's put a little WD-40 in there. See if we can get this to slide on. I'm hoping once it goes on, and it's kind of back and out of the way. Huh. That is really freaking weird. I'm going to have to ask him how these things went on because I don't see how that possibly can go on without bending something here. Is there a chance that this is not mounted? Right. I mean, there's no way other way to mount it. There's supposed to be a spacer. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to turn off the camera so we can figure this out. We'll come back. All right, everybody. We're back. Just had to do some minor stuff here. And uh, had to bend this tab just a little bit to kind of force it out. And now that it's there, it ain't going anywhere. And then up under here because it's almost like this side was tucked in more than the other side. I just went under here, pulled that bolt out, and then just put a couple washers there to push that out about four or five millimeters. So between that and just bending it slightly here, I've got um, plenty of clearance down in there. It's not gonna hit. And I could bend it a bit more if I needed to. So that's on, that's on, seat's on. Now the fun part. Let's fire it up, see how it sounds. Let it warm up for a minute and then we'll get on the rev it a little. sure I'm going to keep those and if I don't Alex uh, you can we can give them to somebody else and just pay it forward the seat I'm definitely going to keep um, and I'm sure the levers and the other stuff is being sent um, with the X pipe that's almost too loud I feel like those would be great if you didn't have the X pipe if you had the cat there's very little baffling in them 
These are kind of like the M4 slip-ons that you might put on a Gixxer 600 or 750. It's just a little bit of perforated core. Almost no, there's there's really no toning it down. I mean, it sounds good. I almost think it's going to be too loud. Let's get a flashlight. Does this have a battery in it? Yeah. So let's look down in there. I mean, there's really there's the narrower part that gives you some restriction. Not restriction, but I mean, there really isn't anything baffling this this is almost like a straight piped bike whereas you look in here it's a much longer tube there's bigger holes that tube that core that's in there that you see the holes in the holes are bigger which lets more of the sound go through and this is all wound with steel wool or fiberglass the hole and the flow is going to be about the same i think i'm going to go back to stock i'm going to go ride it around the block real quick but I almost think that's like too obnoxious. We'll be back in a minute. I'm gonna go for a ride and come back with a, see what we're gonna do. And if not, um, it's cool with Alex. Um, I'm gonna give it away. I'm not gonna sell the stuff he gave me, but I may give it to somebody. So we'll see if there's somebody in my area that's got a Bonneville that these will bolt right up to that doesn't mind the loud noise or you still have the catalytic converter. Um, but yeah, let's put this on my helmet real quick and just go around the block. All right, we're recording. All right, we're gonna try this around the neighborhood really quick. I am completely squitting it up. I'm wearing freaking Tevas. <laughs> no gloves, but I do have my helmet on. We're just gonna go around the subdivision. It's like I wanna use these, but I'm almost like, damn, they're too loud. I'm not gonna leave the subdivision now. Stay real close. I like the idea of smaller mufflers, but it sounds like a Harley. It sounds like open mufflers, like a, or like almost like straight pipes. Those things just really don't do anything. So I think we are going to go back to stock. Nice little downhill wheelie. A lot more popping and crackling. I mean, I might leave them on for... Okay, are we on the wrong side of the road for reason? I don't know, man. It's close. It's right on the edge. Huh. Somehow that flipped up and... Kawasaki hat is there. Hmm. I guess I'll try it. I'll go for a ride this weekend if I can and see if I like it. If it's too loud, I'll go back to stock. They look great. But those are really like... <laughs> And Alex, I'm not being ungrateful. Please understand. This is just a personal taste and preference thing. But it's, um, in a way, it's like, I know these things aren't cheap, but they almost sound like an exhaust, like a, like a glorified exhaust tip. Like they're loud, but like my mufflers are longer, so they, they add a little bit of a deeper tone and they just take some of that raspiness and that hollowness out of it. And here it's like, there's just really no baffling in there. Hmm. I'm undecided. Lighter weight, louder, shorter. I'll go with the stock look, which is still loud as shit because they don't have baffles in them. They're still loud. They don't have any DB killers. But they do have that resonator core to help take some of that over-the-top raspiness out. I don't know. 
I'm going to have to noodle on that one. I'm going to see if I can get it out for a ride tomorrow, see what the weather's like. But that's Dave's Garage for today. Muffler install, new seat. Again, Alex, I cannot thank you enough, man. Even if I, even if those stuff don't end up working for me, I will find a good home for them. We'll, we'll pass them on in the community. We'll see if somebody else is around that's got uh, a similar bike and could use a hand and... We'll do an episode of Dave's Garage, maybe putting them on his. But it looks like tomorrow we're going to have some levers and foot pegs and uh, maybe some other stuff up around the front. We'll see what's in the box of goodies from Mr. Alex. Again, thank you. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll talk to everybody soon in the next episode of Dave's Garage.